Hello everybody, my name is Ash and uh, welcome back to Dark Souls 3. Okay, we're going to go into the first area of the game. I'm going to tune spells and stuff from the bonfire, burn a sh undead bone shard, which we haven't got yet. Anyway, the first area, or I guess... This is this pretty much is the tutorial area, but first proper level, High Wall of Lothric. Look at that, there's a lord vessel and a f fire poker right there. How about that? And we start off in this little room. See, when we're embered as well, we've got like this little fiery effect on our character as well, which is pretty cool. High Wall of Lothric. Fire to light as well. Go down these stairs. Oh. See a guy up there. There we go. Got dogs. One of the worst enemies in the game because if off off screen they can teleport to catch up to you, which is obviously a horrible thing. Oh, you got these like non-hostile hollows that are praying to these like impaled tree-looking. Are they? No, they look like they're, they're growing out of the trees. The trees are growing out of them. I'm praying to them. They only yield minimal amount of souls, but... There we go. Much like, uh, much like Bloodborne, you can actually hold the uh, charge attack. Power R2 attack. And it can do a bit of extra damage. Oh. Also, backstab. There we go. A raw gem. This is one of the infusion gems that uh, Andre mentioned to us. Fused to create a raw weapon. Gem infused with time. Gem infused titanite. Forge the weapons of Lothric foot, foot soldiers. Used in in the infusion of used in infusion to create raw weapons. Raw weapons are easily wielded and have higher attack but lose scaling effects. Uh, I should explain scaling effects. If you look at the uh, Weapon screen here. Down at uh, attribution bonus, you see you've got your requirements and you've got your uh, bonuses. If you like exceed the uh, requirements, uh, which is 10 strength, 10 dex, you actually get a bit of a bonus to the uh, damage. As you see up here, you've got physical, uh, which gives you the where the, the weapon itself has 110 damage by itself, but with the scaling bonus of of the uh, extra points in dex and strength I have, I get 16 extra damage, which isn't much, but obviously with certain weapons you get better scaling. It's usually ranked on a uh, S to E 
rating. So the side doesn't open this side and we have to go around then. They're one of the more intimidating enemies of the game, uh, purely because it's just a flailing hitbox of damage. Uh, and But when you kill it in that farm, uh, it does guarantee a drop of Titanite, but only on the first kill. If you try killing it a second time round, you won't get anything except souls. Um, and if you kill it before it transforms, you won't get the Titanite. So you kind of you have to fight it in that farm in that farm. Longbow and standard arrows. We need 14 decks to wield it, unfortunately. You see there, you've got a, a minus and a, and a red number. That's, what I, that, that's the reduced damage because of the uh, lack of... Uh, well, our parameters, we don't re reach the skill requirement for it. Longbow commonly used by hunters. Arrow must be equipped in order to use bows. The two kinds of arrow can be equipped at any time. And these are, can be switched as necessary. Skill puncher. Pull the arrow even further back. And more powerful shot. That can also pierce shields. I've never actually tried that. I've, it's rare that I use bows in this in these games. But who knows. Maybe some point during this playthrough we'll uh, use a bow. Who knows. Who knows? Right, let's all rest of the bonfire and get our health back. And that's also as a mechanic, whenever you rest at a bonfire, all the enemies respawn. All of a deserted corpse. It's like a weird gimmick of uh, that lantern lit holding a uh, hollow is a. Uh, it kind of like alerts the other aggressive hollows. Cause see, some of these hollows aren't even like aggressive, they're just like apathetic. They're like kind of stuck in a routine of like worship. That's why they're all prostrating in front of these things. But then again, some of them are cowering in our presence. Let's see here. dead dragon as we hit it ash and scales come flying off of it
usually better to uh, run in and attack these hollows a lot quicker. But I wanted to see what would happen. Like which enemies actually aggro to us. There we go. This Urter armor. It's good. We've got some good armor. Not good armor, but we've got some more uh, story time to read. Oh, Jesus. Got the lock on. There we are. So we get to look at that deserter armor. Common soldier armor. Its insignia is one beyond recognition. This musty, rusted hunk of metal befits one reduced to, fev to fevery. Which isn't too bad. Uh, I don't mind the appearance of it. And binoculars. Binoculars made of brass to peer at distant scenery. Their utility is singular, but applications are many. The value of these specs depends greatly on the imagination of their owner. So here we can see the rest of the dragon. Can't move around whilst we're uh, whilst we're looking down at binoculars. See over there, that's where the bonfire is. And there you got Lafric Castle. And uh, that big bridge over there, as well as that particular building there, is uh, something we're going to get into later on in the game. But right now we want to head over there into that building, because there is another bonfire over there. It's all weird. Kind of weird that. What was that sound? I guess that I can hear them from down there. Oh, look at that! There's a lot of items down there. We'll be sure to get them. So I think it's weird that there's a lot of chairs gathered around in front of this uh, dead dragon. It's almost like the uh, there was an audience for this uh, dragon. Also, something to notice in this game. Fall damage is very fucking, uh, very aggressive fall damage in this game. You didn't, I didn't fall that far, but I took quite a lot of damage, all things considering. Pick up more fire bombs. There we go. Oh, more deserter armor. Uh, picked up a uh, gold pine resin. Applies lightning to wep lightning to right hand weapon. Rare pine resin, which emits gold sparks. Chunks of it are even rare, rarer. Temporarily applies lightning to the right hand. Its origins unknown, although some have speculated that it may be may in fact be a type of fungal resin. So yeah, pretty cheesy. Good for applying extra damage to your weapon. Oop. Let's say a spear knight here. I wasn't actually expecting to parry that, to be honest. Bunch of them down here. They do drop Titanite though, which is good. Let's 
So you get a guard kick and wham, repost. Oop, steel soldier helm. I'm pretty sure. Okay, let's have a look at this. Uh, Okay, yeah, so typical helm for Lothric soldier, iron made but half fallen apart. It's never unwise to wear a sturdy form of head protection against arrows and other somatic threats. We've got right here a knight. We can guard break. And wake up stab. There we are. Oh, I didn't drop anything. Now we've got this little door here. Does not open for the other side, but luckily there was an alternate path over there that we could have taken. So we're gonna go and look it look into it. There's quite a lot of enemies there, so we're gonna Estus up. Oh god, that Estus didn't even like <laughs> Maybe it's because we bumped up our health. No, not even. The Estus is pretty weak start at the start of the game. Maybe we'll put some faith into like faith get some faith and uh get some healing miracles. The trick gonna do is just run straight under them all. Let the dragon take care of it all. Without any issue. Are items out there that I would, wouldn't mind grabbing. But first, we're gonna go unlock this door. Club is a uh, pretty cool weapon, strength weapon, even before you infuse it with anything that boosts strength scaling. Um, does blunt strike attacks, which is good against heavy armor. Simple wooden club characterized by savage leaping attacks. This crude bladeless strike weapon is effective against most foes and can break the guard of, of a shield. Warcry, let out spirited. Warcry that temporarily boosts attack, enables a special consecutive strong attack. I'm sure to test that out when we can. Also, there's one more item over there that I want to go and grab. Alright, off we go. There we go. Got lucky there. Anyway, we've got the Claymore, which is an excellent weapon. Uh, but we can't wield it yet. We haven't got enough strength. But we're nearly there. Don't worry about it. An unusually large sword. He heavy great sword. Normally wielded in two hands. Highly versatile and can be swung broadly and thrusted. Stance. One stance. 
Oh shit. Want well, to stance to do strong attack and lap. Guard break now. Might use the claymore quite a bit in this playthrough. Undecided. More fire bombs. Before we light that bonfire, go around here. We've got another rest, another Titanite shard. Let that bonfire. There's one thing I actually need to go back and get because I almost forgot. It's a very popular weapon for early game players to use because it does do a lot of damage. Uh, and most starting classes can wield it, yeah, even with just two hands. You can see this chest here. There's something unique about it. I wonder if you can see it. It's got like teeth and a tongue. Anyway, there's a trick to this. If the chain is pointing forward there, it means it's a mimic. And you can actually see it breathing a little bit. Let's see if we can catch it. Yep, there it is. It's breathing. So why is the chest moving by itself? Well, let's test out that uh, war cry ability, that... Uh, that thing he wanted. By the way, you can do a weapon art uh, with a... Uh, by two-handed most weapons. But there are certain shields that we'll probably see in the next episode. Oh shit, that's actually a grab attack and it will kill you. Especially this early in the game. Anyway, he drops his... Oh! Yes, we got ver we got extremely lucky. This is gonna re really help out with like certain items. Anyway, normally the guaranteed drop is the deep battle axe, uh, but that symbol of avarice is actually really really nice. Uh, we'll read the we'll read the symbol of avarice. Head of of the avaricious creature that mimics treasure chests can be worn if one if one so pleases. Increases soul absorption. From defeated enemies as well as item discovery, but the curse of Brandon, but the curse of the branded, also drains HP. The very form of this creature is thought to a, be a form of a brat or brand or a punishment for sin. I see in the bottom corner there uh, for item discovery, it actually boosts it up by a hundred, which means farming for items without the gold serpent ring, you know. Oh, farm for items, you know, usually involves wearing this, and if you look up at the top, the health is slowly drained as we're uh, wearing it. And there's nothing that really can interrupt that. But we'll take it off for now, but we're going back to the bonfire. And also, got ourselves a deep battle axe, uh, which, you see there, it does uh, li less physical damage, but it does 96 uh, dark damage. Dark is one of the elements in this game, uh, among lightning, fire, and magic. Uh, easily wielded axe, crafted for battle and inflicting standard damage. Its weight can be inf can be used to inflict high damage, but use must be used carefully as it leaves the wielder open to retaliation. And it also has a war cry, but. You see here, it has a. It says it has stagger frames for missing attacks, but it doesn't seem to be as brutal as like Dark Souls One or uh, Dark Souls Two even. But we're going to be using that for the rest of this area because it's actually a pretty good weapon. And we're going to rest at the bonfire, and we're going to end the episode there. So I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Bye.